don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's Saturday, it's still raining outside, and I thought I would come up and do an art journal page. I wanted to do an art journal page. Um, so I've sat down and I've pulled out some pieces of book text from my stash, from old books. So I bought a year or two ago a, a copy of uh, the New Testament and it was falling to pieces and there were pages missing in the charity shop um, and it was only like 10 pence so I bought that. So I've got a couple of sheets from an old um, Bible and I've also got a well, New Testament uh, and I've also got a couple of sheets from um, an old copy of Journey to the Centre of the Earth from Jules Verne and I thought I would use that and um, just as a little bit of background text to the art journal page and, and I kind of knew that I wanted to incorporate my um, my two new stencils somewhere in the page um, but then I sat down and I thought to myself now what <laughs> um, I've got a little piece of bubble wrap just lying on my um, work surface here I've got a roll of washi tape that's got dice in it um, and I thought, well, what am I going to do? What colours am I going to use to do this art journal page? Let me have a look around me and see what kind of inspiration I can get from what I can see around me. So I did. So I started to turn around uh, and look around. And I kept seeing blue items on my worktop. Um, I saw a book, a little notebook that was sent to me in Happy Mail. I saw the... Um, iPad rest that I use when I'm sometimes taking photographs, excuse the focus, thank you very much, which is blue. Um, there's the pieces of cardboard that I've got blue in them that I used in a project or was going to use in a project. There's my tray that I keep my wet wipes in, which is blue. I've got blue from my brushes. I've got a pencil case um, that's police box blue obviously, and, and quite a few other bits and pieces around me that are, you know, kind of blue. So I thought, well, okay, um, little notepad, blue. Um, so I thought, well, okay, something's telling me to use blue here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, well, what I have done is I've gone into my paint stash and I've pulled out some blue colours. So I've got Dina Wakey Media Lapis which is a really nice kind of um, blue, blue, if you like, a lightish kind of mid-tone blue. And I've got night, which is a dark, dark blue, um, other side of navy, if you like, um, and black. Perfect complement. but I've also gone into my deco art and pulled out two other blues. So I've got Indian turquoise and I've got Williamsburg blue which is a kind of grey blue. So I've got four different colours of blue and a black. I've got some washi tape with black and a little bit of kind of yellowy colour in there. So to accompany that, I also pulled out yellow. So I'm going to be using blue, but with accent colours of a little bit of yellow. Happy enough. Okay, so... I'm going to get started, so I need some matte medium, and I'm not going to stick these down as they are, I'm obviously just going to tear um, pieces of these, get rid of the outside borders, so this bible was in a real sorry state, like I said there was half the pages missing, the actual covers were distressed beyond belief. So I thought, well, that would make perfect just to add as a little bit of background material on the page. Now, I'm not really going to concentrate and do a double page spread. I'm only going to concentrate and do a, a single page spread today. So that will kind of, if I spill over to that side, I spill over to that side. That's no problem at all. Okay, so let's do some journey to the centre of the earth. Oh, 
shall I do this? So we've got horizontals there. Shall I tear this so we've got some verticals in? Why not? Why not indeed? Let's do it that way. So I've kind of got, not really got any fixed kind of idea in my head as to what I want this art journal page to look like. All I know so far are the colours that I'm going to use and some of the resources for creating a little bit of texture into the page. And that's pretty much going to be it. Okay, I think that will do. So let's get those glued down into place. Now I can either stick those down with a diary glue stick or I can use that medium. I can use one or the other. One's going to take a little while to dry, one I can just go straight ahead on, but I'm not... <laughs> choices, choices, eh? Let's see. Okay. Choices, choices. Yeah. Must be coming to the end. Let's stick that down there. Yeah, let's do that. Perhaps not with that one. Let's see if we've got a new one or a one that hasn't quite been spent. I've said before, when I buy these little diary glue sticks, because they are so inexpensive, I tend to buy them in bulk. About like six at a time. That's upside down. Not that it matters, but. Get that glued. Okay, so let's get that other one glued down there. And if there's a little bit of texture with this, if it pulls up at the sides, yeah, not all that bothered. Just to add a little bit more interest to the page. Let's stick that about there. I've got that little piece. I know sometimes watching somebody stick bits of paper down onto a page isn't the most interesting about journal page processes to watch, but sometimes it's nice to actually hear somebody's thought process. And in my case today, there is no thought process. It's just a, um, let's just see what happens. So I think you can call it intuitive play, or you can just think of it as just let the process do its own thing, which is also a good way of creating art journal pages. It becomes a bit more organic when it's not too planned out and it's not too prescriptive if it's not too planned out because it can take on a little bit of a life of its own and becomes its own organic kind of process. These glue sticks are definitely running out. Let's see what else. Let's see if we've got another one. Is that a new one? That looks like a brand new one. There we go. Yeah, so they take on a kind of organic process of their own. So I can put that right the way up there. Just trying to keep the text in of the right way up, if you like. Going to get upside down. On. That sounds like postman pushing post through the letter box. Okay, so we've got that in the background. Do I need to add any more? I think maybe maybe into the small piece. Just in that middle section. And again, with it being an organic process, one of those things that you you kind of um, pick up on, you, you if it looks like it needs something else somewhere, it, it probably does. You know, you've got to trust 
your instinct a little bit when it comes to creating pages of this kind of nature. Um, a lot of people go, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know where, you know, shall I leave it, shall I, you know, do I overwork it like you do sometimes? Trust your instincts. You know, when you get to a stage and you think, is that enough? The fact that you're asking the question, is that enough? Probably means that it is. You know, you get to a stage where when you start asking the questions, it's probably time to think, well, actually, if I'm asking the question, then I've probably done enough. Okay, so the next stage then, I want to start adding colour down onto the page. Now, for this, I'm going to start, I'm going to go start with the darker colours first. So I'm going to be adding, um, no, I'm not. I think I'm going to start by adding the blue, the night first, rather than the black. So I haven't gessoed anywhere on the page. Um, perhaps I need to do that first. Let's use clear gesso. So this is what I mean about it being an organic process. I could paint directly onto the page, but that would mean that it would sink directly straight in and I wouldn't really have a lot of manoeuvrability for moving the paint around if I wanted to or maybe doing some ghosting or whatever. So it limits your choices if you don't add your gesso. Now you can add white gesso as well as a base. I'm using clear. So just give that a quick coating. Hopefully I've got everywhere. Right, so I'll just add a little bit just off the page, just in case I do go off the page a little bit. Sometimes I like to just go over here. I think that's just about everywhere. Need to get some more of that. Okay, so let's get this dried off and then I'll be back. The gesso is now dry, which is lovely. So I can now go ahead and start adding my blue colour. So, um, like I just said, the postman just been and delivered um, some buttons that I'd ordered ages ago um, for to replace some missing buttons. <laughs> from some household items, but they came in some bubble wrap. Now that was the bubble wrap I was going to use um, for this project to add a little bit of texture, but this is the bubble wrap that the buttons are adding. Now look at the difference in the size of those two. Huge, great big bubbles. I'm hoping you can actually see that. Let me just bring that blue book in and you can see, hopefully that's better. Size of the bubbles on there compared to the size of the bubbles on there. So not all bubble wrap is the same. So Get your collection of bubble wrap going, guys. Anyway, right, so I was going to add some of that night paint on there, wasn't I? So what I'll do now is I'm going to put some blobs of the night on that page there. Now, I can either go around the page with a baby wipe to blend it in, just this one's been sticking out my packet a little bit, so it's gone a bit dry. Or I could use my finger. Um, I'm not feeling in a messy kind of mood today, so I'm going to put this paint on with, with the baby wipe. So just go over the top. Now the beauty about using a baby wipe is you can go in different directions. Because we've got the gesso on the page, you can also maneuver the paint. So I'm just going to take that just over the edge of the page, like I said, I probably would do. And that's it. And then go around the page with that colour. Now, because we've got the gesso on the page, I can quite easily, if I want to, now, 
add more to make it darker or if I flip my wet wipe around I can just lightly brush and take some off revealing some of that text underneath and I'm just going in kind of left and right kind of motion and then I can then just swipe up and down a little bit just to relieve. Now can you see as well where I've painted on the gesso you've got brush marks in it. So I'm just going to lightly just rub just to kind of reveal some more of that text in certain areas. There we go. Just to kind of give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of lift, which is cool. Okay, now let me get that dried off. Okay, that's now dry. So what I want to do is I want to bring some of that black paint in. I'm going to add just a couple of little bits of black around the page. So what I want is some scrap card, if I've got some. This will do. This is just where I've removed the backing board from a, uh, a wirebound pad. And it's created a kind of neat little bordery kind of thing, isn't it? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that just to create a little bit of blackness. I'm just going to scrape it up and down the page across. Quite a lot there, so let's move some of that around. Actually, let's just abandon that idea and just use my finger. Sometimes using your finger works just as well. So, but before you get it too dry, if you want to lift a little bit of it, just bring that baby wipe back in again. too much of this side. It's all a process of just working with what you've done, what you've got. And no page is ever so lost that it can't be recovered. So a bit dark over here, so what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more blue on top of it again. So get it dry first. Do us, and then I can bring some more of that blue. So a little bit more there, a bit more there, a bit more there, a bit more there. Maybe just a tad up there. Bring those blue tones back in. And I apologise if I use my middle finger too much. I know it offends some people, but that's just the way that we work the paint sometimes. That's determined to stay white, that isn't it? No matter what we do, it's determined. <laughs> okay. If you want to stay white, then maybe we'll let you stay white. dirty fingers. Okay, let me get that dried off and I'll be right back and we'll start layering up some more colour. Okay, so that dark blue and black is now pretty much dry. So I'm hoping that this camera is going to stay in focus. I've got my auto focus on it. Um, so I'm hoping it is going to stay focused. Yep, that looks pretty clear to me. So what I want to do now 
is to start adding in some of that layering. So to do that, I'm going to bring in this new stencil. This is called XYZ or XYZ, depending on where you are, um, Canada, US, Europe, whatever. Um, and again, I'm going to layer some of this, but I'm going to use this time the lapis. So that's that um, lighter blue color. So I'm just going to pop some of that paint down onto this paint mat here. And I've got a Tim Holtz Distress ink blending foam. And I'm just going to work some of that paint in to the sponge. And that's going to create me a kind of paint sponge, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go around adding that paint in. And I've lined it directly up with the edge of the page. So you can see we've got some of that nice colour. And then I'll line this up with the bottom part of the page here. And do the same thing again. Now because I've put the paint into the sponge, I can either pounce it down or spounce it, like I am doing here or you can maneuver it around like so. It really is your choice. So let's lift that up. So we've got blue on blue action going on there, look. Nice and kind of subtle. Well, it's not necessarily subtle in some areas. Down there, you're getting that um, difference in tone, difference in colour. So it's great for kind of like background. So I'm going to get that dry quickly. And then we'll see what it looks like when it's dry, because it's a bit shiny at the moment. Right, right, let's see how that's dried. So you can see the colour variation there quite nicely. And it's very kind of subtle in the background enough to give interest without it being overpowering. Now, the reason I designed this stencil is because sometimes when you're creating an art journal page, you want different patterns. You don't want the same overall pattern on your page. Um, and you end up doing a small area in one pattern, then bringing another stencil and doing another small area to get that variation in pattern. Well, I thought, well, why don't I just do that with one stencil? So this is why I created this XYZ, or XYZ, because it's got different patterns, it's got different items on it, it's got a little bit of typography, some numbers, and lots of other icons with your exclamation points and your question marks and your, your little forward and backward arrows and, and that kind of stuff, which gives it kind of movement, but also gives it a lot of variation that you can use this in the background. Um, with great effect without having to swap and change to different stencils. So, but I did put in like a, a coffee cup mark on this one. Um, and then after I created this, I thought, do you know what? I actually could do with a proper coffee cup one um, with larger circles in it, which is why I created this one, which is called Dirty Circles. So, and I interwove them so that they create, again, a nice kind of background pattern. So I'm gonna use this one but I'm going to use a lighter coloured paint this time. I'm going to use that Williamsburg blue. So I'll give it a shake up because the binder always separates from these. And you'll end up clogging your nozzle. There you go. So let's just drop a little bit of that. Now instead of using a Tim Holtz foam, I'm going to use a piece of craft sponge for this because I want it kind of scrabbly. I want it don't want it even or flat. So let's have a look. So we've got nothing really done in this corner here. So let's just go over that lightly because it's a lighter grey colour or greyish kind of blue and it's fairly opaque as well. So it's going to 
lay on the surface and not allow the colour underneath to shine through quite as much. Which is why I don't want a solid kind of impression like you would get with the ink blending foam. Let's pick up a little bit more of that paint. Work it around. Okay, let's see what we've got with that. There. Like it, and then we'll lose that. Turn it round and go into the top left hand corner. And of course, it doesn't matter if you miss bits because that's the nature of the pattern anyway. A bit more paint in there. Let's see. Cool. Liking that, so we've got the layered effect and we're starting to get those lighter colours showing through. So I put that to one side, and again, I'll get it dried off, and then I'll be back. Those dirty circles are now kind of dry, and as you can see, depending on the light, <laughs> they kind of disappear into the background, which is excellent. All right, so I wanted to introduce some of this washi tape, didn't I? So I'm just going to tear some of that and maybe put some down here over the top of those numbers. Just give that a push down. And we'll do a couple of offset pieces. Give it a push. Maybe up here. And then we'll do maybe a vertical line. Do the same on this side. And then what I'm going to do is just take a long piece and then run that over the center line there just to kind of pull those two sides together. And that's as far as I'm going with that one. Okay, now the washi tape is shiny. So, and I don't particularly like shine, so what I want to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to go over with a little bit of clear gesso, just to knock back that shine a tad. And also, just to help, maybe stick it down a little bit. For a horrid second, then I thought I'd picked up the white gesso instead. <laughs> now that would have been something, wouldn't it? Get out of that one, Mike. So it was just as I was painting the gesso onto the page when the camera started to go a little bit funny. Um, I've been having problems with the old battery, which is nearly five or six years old now, in fact, probably even longer than that. Um, so it's kind of losing power, switching the camera on and off at really odd times. Um, I have bought a new replacement battery. Um, so, and that had been charging up, but it wasn't quite ready at this point. So um, the film picks back up again after I'd dried the gesso on the page and I'd mixed 
um, two shades of that blue paint, the Williamsburg blue, which was the grey kind of blue, um, which was the deco art one, and the Dina Wakely Media lapis. So I put a little bit of those two colours on my paint mat and I just mix them together to create a new blue tone. And then that's where the video picks back up again. And then in a little little while after that, it, it goes kaput completely and I have to switch over the battery completely. So, just so you know. So a different kind of blue tone. So I'm just going to paint it onto my bubble wrap quickly. And then I'm going to flip that over and put that over the washi tape. And that's going to kind of break that up a little bit. Revitalize. And again, create a little bit of tone on tone where We've got blue on blue. I'll just take that onto the other side of the page. And my camera died while I just popped that piece into the middle. But I've dried it off and um, recharged the battery, <laughs> had some lunch, so I'm back. Right, so to carry on then, you can see we've now started to break up that washi tape Give it a bit more interest so we've got some of that writing showing through underneath as well the text showing through we've got all those different layers and texture and scrumminess showing through there so what i want to do now is i want to introduce some of that um really light blue color so this is the indian turquoise as a bit of a highlight just put a small smidge down there and then this time get that small piece of bubble wrap. Again, just grab another little brush, a brushette. A brushette being a small brush. Like so, and we'll take some of that blue and then we'll go over and create some little highlights interspersed with that first lot. So this is where the highlights start to pull out. So again, do some down here. And I'm only lightly pushing my palm down. Trying to keep the bubble wrap kind of straight, if you know what I mean. So it's not going on a diagonal, either a horizontal or a vertical. And then I'm going to put some that way. And just take a little down here. And then just a small amount. Top of the page. And that will do me for that bit. So I'm now going to dry that off real quick. And then I'll be back. Now that that light blue is dry, I think it's time to start bringing in that yellow. So I said I wanted to introduce some yellow highlights um, into the page, which kind of help to blend those dice and um, washi tapes into the background. So because yellow paint tends to be more opaque, no, sorry, not opaque, translucent, the exact opposite of opaque, um, than most paints. Um, I like to mix it a little bit with um, some white gesso. I don't know whether you just heard Mr. Bentley back in the background. Right, so I'll grab some of that yellow, mix in with the gesso, and that will make it a little bit more opaque. So we've got a nice kind of buttery yellow there that we can now add 
as a little bit of a highlight. So I'm just going to dump that in some water, grab my fan brush, just clean that off, get some water, mix that in quite nicely and then I can add some nice yellow highlighted splatters into the background. Perfect. So I'm going to get those dried off and then I'll be right back and I'll go and let Mr Bentley out because that's what he's barking for. He wants to go for a wee wee. So my yellow splatters are now pretty much dry and I think it's time to kind of start to wrap this art journal page up. So all I want to do now is to create a um, some typographical focal point on the page. So what I've done is I've got some self-adhesive um, letters. There you go, you can see them better. Um, now that the auto exposure has set itself. Um, so these were sent to me recently in a pack of Happy Mail, a small package of Happy Mail um, that just turned up completely unannounced um, from a lady called Kathy Main Smith over in California. So I'm going to use some of those letters to create my focal point. So what I've done is I've taken the letters and I've added them to a plastic ruler just so that I've got um, a little bit of... Um, play room with them so I can get them lined up so I know that they're going to be um, level and I've got some like adhesive or removable adhesive like backing that I'm just going to stick well just going to place underneath just so that they don't fall off keep those in place and then I'm going to put that down and then I can just lift the ruler and that should just release the letter out. So that should have just released the letters in place. That didn't really work as well as it, I thought it was going to do, but never mind. Yeah, live and learn. Stick that down, and then the next lot I'm going to put here. It's probably because the ruler's too thick, actually. Just push that down, and just gently roll those off. with them being self-adhesive. It's a little bit more precise to stick that one down on with. There we go. And then I'm just going to go over the top, just push them down, make sure they stick. And I think that's going to be it. So kind of speaks for itself. You can read into that whatever you want to for the situation. So for art journaling, now what? Or you could even do it the other way around and said, what now? Where do you go from here? And you can take that and apply that to life at the moment in these strange times that we're living in. So all I need to do now is just grab my pen and just in the corner here, I'm just going to quickly sign it and date it. Today is what? It's the 13th. There we go. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do for this art journal page. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that kind of, um, what do you call it? Intuitive 
play where I didn't really know what I wanted to create until I started putting stuff down and then you know the way that the paints and the the shapes all come together um, it kind of inform what you do next so there you go so yeah hope you enjoyed that if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already for more like this then all you have to do is click that subscribe button at the end of the video that's all from me for now i'll see you all again very very soon bye for now I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.